All right, so today I want to introduce you to the Savannah ball python. The Savannah consists of two genes, the cinnamon and the Mojave. And the thing I like about the Savannah is it's a combination of two completely opposite genes. So you have the cinnamon on one hand that is a dark morph, really makes a lot of combinations really dark. And then you have the Mojave, which is in the blue-eyed leucistic, tends to really brighten and enhance a lot of combinations. And when you mix other genes into the Savannah, you can get some pretty varied results, some pretty crazy offspring coming out of the savannah breeding other genes into the mix. So today I want to jump over the internet and I want to show you the potential of the savannah ball python. All right, so I'm going to jump over here on morphmarket.com and I want to show you the two genes that make up the savannah. And the first one I want to show you is the cinnamon. And this is what one version of the cinnamon looks like. The cinnamon can be pretty variable from one to another. And usually the cinnamon is a dark gene. You mix it with other genes and it really darkens the combinations. And the cinnamon, I'd say this is probably one of the darkest cinnamons that I've seen over here. Sometimes it can have an almost jet black background like this. And sometimes the cinnamons can be kind of a reddish brown it can be really variable from one to the other and a lot of times the cinnamon will have kind of a kind of a scrambled up pattern and when you mix the cinnamon into other combinations a lot of times you'll see kind of a scrambled up streaking on the sides of the snake which is kind of interesting so here is another gene in the savanna and that is the mojave and the mojave can be pretty variable too from one to the other this one's probably one of the brightest mojaves that i've seen really bright and intense sometimes they can be darker than this. Sometimes they can be almost black, almost all the way down to the bottom. And usually with the Mojaves, you get kind of these keyhole patterns in the side where you can almost put like a skeleton key in the side, kind of that, that kind of a keyhole pattern on the side of the snake. And here's what happens if you work Mojave into the cinnamon. Take a look at this. This is one version of the Savannah. And this is, this is pretty amazing. This is like a super dark version of the Savannah. You actually take the dark Mojave and mix it with a dark cinnamon and you can get a really dark combination between the two and you can definitely see the kind of the pattern on the side is kind of streaked out from the cinnamon kind of wiping out the keyhole patterns from the Mojave and I actually pulled up another savanna and <laughs> this one's gonna blow you away take a look at this this one is exactly the same genes as the last snake this is another savanna it's pretty amazing from one to the other and you can actually pick one of the lighter brighter Mojaves and it would work it into one of the more reddish brown cinnamons and you get a completely different effect which is pretty amazing that it has the same genes and completely different colors and kind of the cool thing about the savannah one of the things I really like is if you actually take two savannas and breed them together you get a, a whole bunch of different things it's not an allelic complex you'll actually get normals you'll get cinnamons you'll get Mojave's and this is what else you get take a look at this you'll get the super cinnamon take a look at this it's a completely jet black snake and as a matter of fact the super cinnamon can be really variable if you're actually starting with two dark cinnamons you'll actually get an almost completely black snake and if you're actually working with some of the reddish brown ones sometimes you'll get like a reddish brown patternless super cinnamon and sometimes the super cinnamons can have a little bit of a ringer here and there that's pretty normal for the super cinnamons and another thing you'll also get when you breed two savannas together you'll get the black snake and take a look at this you'll also get the white snake a completely white snake because the mojave is in the blue-eyed leucistic complex so you breed two mojaves together and you get the super mojave which is a pretty amazing combination breeding two savannas together and this one is actually an all-white snake with bright blue eyes which is kind of interesting it's in the blue-eyed leucistic and keep in mind if you actually take the savanna which contains the mojave and you breed it into other genes in the blue-eyed leucistic You'll also get the white snake, or sometimes you'll actually get kind of a purplish lavender color snake, depending on which genes you mix in with the Mojave. So if you have like a Mojave Lesser, you'll get an all white snake. But if you mix it with like the Phantom or the Mystic or the Special, you'll kind of get a purplish snake combined with the Mojave. 
So take a look at this. If you actually work other jeans into the Savannah, you can actually get some really crazy combinations. And the yellow belly is really awesome working it in. The yellow belly as a jean by itself, it's almost, I consider it kind of a sleeper morph. You can almost hardly tell that it's different than a normal. And sometimes it's hard to pick out the normals and the yellow bellies if you set them side by side. And usually you can tell the difference because a lot of times on the yellow belly, you kind of have a busy pattern right along the belly on either side of the belly sometimes it's kind of hard to pick out and sometimes you'll actually have these flames coming up between the patterns some people say their yellow bellies are a little bit brighter yellow than a lot of their normals and they can pick them out pretty easy and here's what happens if you work yellow belly into the savanna take a look at this crazy snake that is a quite an interesting effect when you're working yellow belly into the mojave and the cinnamon and you can tell usually when you work yellow belly into other combinations it really lightens usually have a really strong influence uh, as far as bringing in a lot of yellows and oranges from the yellow belly. You can definitely see it's lightening and bring in kind of a yellowish orange color. Makes for a really amazing combination. You can see it still has the dark from the cinnamon and it's kind of wiping out the sides from the cinnamon. Makes for a really amazing combination. So here is the pinstripe, one of my favorite standalone jeans. The pinstripe can be super bright gold. I've actually produced some in my collection and they don't, some of them don't even look real. They almost look like they're made out of metal, like they're metallic or something. Pretty amazing. And usually the pinstripe has a really strong stripe right down the back of the snake. And sometimes it'll actually have these little tiny like pinstripes coming right down the sides. And here's what happens if you work pinstripe into the savanna. Take a look at this crazy snake. This is actually the pinstripe savanna otherwise known as the chainsaw kind of an interesting name. it almost looks like someone took a chainsaw and cut a hole like a line right down the top kind of like a jagged line right down the top of the snake as a matter of fact if you take the chainsaw and you work in pastel this is an interesting combination take a look at this you get the leather face <laughs> I don't know who came up with these crazy names the chainsaw and the leather face but this looks like it's actually almost like made a leather it's kind of an interesting combination. So here is the ghost. The ghost is kind of an interesting gene. The ghost is recessive. You need two copies of the ghost for a visual. So you need two ghost genes to actually work it in. So it's a little bit harder. You'd have to, essentially what you'd have to do is you'd have to take a savanna, breed it to a ghost, and then you would get savanna het ghost. And then you'd have to breed the, the heads back together to get a visual. And the ghost is, is kind of variable. Essentially what the ghost does is it really kind of washes out the snake, almost gives it like a cream appearance and a lot of versions of ghosts bring out a lot of orange as a matter of fact there's a version of ghost called the orange ghost and sometimes just the regular ghost not the orange ghost can actually have a lot of orange color I think there's kind of some overlap between the orange ghost and the regular ghost and here's what happens if you were a ghost into the savanna take a look at this this is this is probably one of my favorite ghost combinations and let me tell you when it comes to ghosts I think it's an acquired taste sometimes it almost looks like the snake is in shed and then you know a lot of people when they're starting out in ball pythons they're like hey I want to go for something really bright and flashy with a high contrast and then after you're into ball pythons for a while you're like hey I want something a little bit different let's go after the ghost and the orange ghost and let me tell you it kind of grows on you and it's one of those genes that I think you kind of have an acquired taste and after a while it's like you start thinking man these orange ghosts make some really amazing combinations so here is the banana. When it comes to visual dominance, the banana is probably in the top of the list. When you mix banana with almost anything else, you end up with a banana looking snake. A lot of times you can definitely see the banana in the mix. And the bananas can kind of trick you. When they're young like this, this is a really young one. A lot of times they'll have a lot of almost like a lavender background and a lot of oranges and purples in the snake. And when they grow up and mature, they turn into like a two-tone yellow color with a lot of freckles all over the snake they go it's probably one of the genes that goes through one of the biggest transformations from when it's a hatchling to an adult you can actually work a lot of other genes into the banana to keep a really bright banana color but you have to mix it with the right genes and here's what happens if you work banana into the savanna take a look at this you get the banana savanna <laughs> and when i first thought this i was like i want to buy this snake just for the name the banana savanna that is a pretty amazing combination and it's pretty amazing how the savanna kind of 
banana competes with the banana and you can see you, you can still see the banana color in there but the savannah with the mojave and the cinnamon you can definitely see them shining through and you almost get like a dark almost looks kind of like a ghost like a dark ghost banana or something like that pretty interesting combination so here is the pastel. The pastel is kind of interesting when you work it into this combination. You get kind of a different result than you would expect. The pastel, I'd say, is probably the number one most popular gene in all of ball pythons. Sometimes they can be super bright yellow as hatchlings, and they're not much more expensive than like a normal ball python. A lot of people, I'd say, you know, they're looking at normals as a pet, and then just for a little bit more, you can actually jump up into a pastel. And I think that is the attractiveness of getting a pastel. And here's what happens if you work pastel into the savannah take a look at this this is kind of an interesting combination so essentially what you're getting you're getting a pewter which is the combination of a pastel and a cinnamon and the, the, the pewters can be really variable sometimes they can look a little bit like this and sometimes they can look almost like a silver metallic color with no other colors it almost like completely washes it out and you end up with a silver snake and this one is if you actually take a look at the the genes this is the cinnamon and the pastel that makes up the pewter and then you have the mojave is a lot of times when you actually make the pewter a lot of times when you mix other genes into the mix the pewter has such a strong visual dominance that sometimes it completely erases a lot of the colors coming through with, from other genes and if you actually take the, the pewter and you add one more copy of the pastel so you actually have a super pastel cinnamon mojave take a look at this one this is a sterling mojave Mojave, which is kind of a, it's pretty amazing some of these sterlings and the Peters they can be really variable some of them like this one are really super metallic and kind of the interesting thing about this if you look at the genetics this is you know the Mojave and the super pastel making up the sterling which is super visually dominant so you can work almost any other gene into the sterling and a lot of times you'll end up with a sterling with a slightly different pattern and let me tell you if you actually see some of these metallic looking snakes in person it'll just blow you away sometimes it's hard to believe that it's actually a real snake it's pretty amazing so here is the GHI and when you were GHI into this combination you get a completely unexpected result which is kind of a weird anomaly. The GHI stands for gotta have it GHI and the GHI is another dark gene. A lot of times when you mix it with a lot of combinations you'll get a really dark background and the GHI usually really jumbles up the pattern and one of my favorite combinations is the GHI Mojave which is usually like an, a, a completely black almost patternless snake with this fluorescent line right down the top but when you add cinnamon it completely changes it take a look at this this is what happens when you work GHI into the savannah you get a really unexpected result and you end up with uh, like a almost like a patternless gold snake <laughs> pretty amazing as a matter of fact I thought this was like a weird anomaly over here and I was looking at a whole bunch of different GHI Mojave cinnamons and they're all like almost a completely patternless almost like a metallic gold colored snake pretty amazing combination so here is the leopard. The leopard is another dark morph, especially when you work it into other genes that tend to be a little bit dark. You get a really dark background. And the leopard really jumbles up the pattern too. I'd say it's probably the king of combos as far as a co-dominant that you actually work, work it into other combos to really jumble up the pattern. And here's what happens when you work leopard into the savannah. Take a look at this. It's like everything you work into the savannah, you get this completely unexpected result with the gold snake. And then this one, you you get a striped snake which is pretty crazy and a lot of times when you mix leopard into certain combinations you'll actually get a striped snake which is kind of a weird anomaly especially if you mix leopard with butter or lesser I'd say in most cases not all cases but a lot of times you'll actually get a striped snake and you definitely see the leopard is really darkening the background to where it's super jet black as a matter of fact I think if you actually were to take like a Mojave cinnamon like the reddish brown Mojave cinnamon the, the reddish brown cinnamon and you were to work in leopard I, I can almost guarantee you'd probably end up with a similar looking snake almost really super jet black from the leopard influence on the savannah you could definitely tell the leopards really wiping out the sides too
So I wanted to show you one last snake. This is kind of a weird kind of anomaly. Take a look at this one. This is like the craziest one I saw over here. This is actually the combination of the GHI and the banana. So this is the banana savanna working in the GHI. Remember the GHI actually gives you that the patternless gold snake. And then you mix it together and you get this weird purplish snake with a bright gold dotted line right down the back. Pretty amazing, pretty unexpected combination. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Chris Donat asks, how do you plan your ball python breeding projects? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, I've kind of changed it up this year. In my previous years, essentially what I do is right at the beginning of the ball python breeding season, I sit down with a spreadsheet and I kind of figure out my pairings, the males and the females. And the problem is, is a lot of times I've actually got into a couple months into the breeding season and you kind of have breeders regret. You're thinking, oh, I shouldn't have paired those up. I should have paired these other snakes up for some cool combos. Or you get to the point where, you know, I'm pretty much doing breeding ball pythons full time now and you get to the point where you start running out of money and you're like man if I had just paired up these other snakes I could have paid the bills a little bit easier and made ends meet so since what I'm doing this year is um, I made a spreadsheet and I list all my males and all my females and then in the off season I'm actually pairing them up and then as I kind of progress into the off season I start you know kind of rearranging the schedule based on what I'm seeing over on morph market and some of the cool combinations and usually I don't really go for the money, but that has, you know, some influence on what I'm pairing up. You know, I definitely want to be able to pay the bills and make ends meet. But a lot of times, you know, it takes a long time to figure out the pairing. As a matter of fact, this year, I paired up my Pastel Desert Ghost to my Calico Pastel. And I got it halfway into the season. And I was kind of having breeders regret. I was like, oh, I shouldn't have paired those up. I should have paired something else with that, that Calico Pastel female. And come to find out, she's actually Het Desert Ghost. And I actually got a visual Desert Ghost. So it actually, it turned out for the best actually doing that pairing which is kind of interesting and keep in mind that the further you get into it a lot of times you'll, you'll do a pairing and then you'll make a bunch of offspring and then a lot of times you'll hit where you're shooting for and then you won't actually do that pairing again especially if you have like 10 or 20 or like 30 females and males to choose from you actually do a pairing once and you get kind of the crown jewel of that pairing and a lot of times you won't go back and pair those snakes again you'll kind of keep mixing it up in the future years to come. And a lot of times you'll produce some new offspring that you'll breed back to some of your other females. So a lot of times it's constantly changing. A lot of times you never pair up the same snake more than once. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.